Hey everybody, it's Eddie J on Crypto. Hope you're having a good one. So it's Sunday, and you know it's time for the Sunday Roundup. So I've been hearing a lot of different things, right? Um, after, after, not even after, during all this banking turmoil, global banking turmoil, and we'll, get, we'll dig into that, um, I've been hearing some crazy nonsense about how Bitcoin, I mean, yeah, how Bitcoin hit a million dollars. It's like, what kind of crack are you on? What, what, what kind of crack you want? You want to know who came up with that? He's the former C CTO of Coinbase. Just, excuse me, language. He's just talking out of his ass. You know, and he, because he's not saying, oh, it'll hit a million dollars in two years, three years. No, he's saying in 90 days. I'm sorry, that, that, is it possible? Almost anything in this universe is possible. Is it probable? No. In my humblest opinion, I, I don't believe so. I just don't see how the numbers work. Just go do the math and figure out the current market cap, what's currently out there, right? I mean, I might be even be able to pull that up. So the current market cap is uh, 533 billion, okay? Let's dig in, let's see. 533, 533 billion um, circulating supply is about 19,321,000. I want you to do the math on how much more money would have to go into Bitcoin for it to hit a million dollars each, okay? Just take that number. You can, you can do this yourself. You can figure it out yourself, okay? And just figure that out. And you'll see that the probability of that happening is like, no, not going to happen. You would need Fidelity, um, BlackRock. You would need so many big companies, big firms to dump trillions into Bitcoin specifically for it to hit a million dollars. These are facts. What are the chances of that happening? Well, is the technology there for them to do it? Yes. Is the desire there for them to do it? In 90 days? No. I, I, I don't believe so. Not even close. All right. Um, so when I look at this, I'm just kind of like, well, do not listen to people that speak in sensationalism. Do your own research. Gather your own facts. Okay. Here's some facts for you. There are about 186 banks right now, regional banks, that are not in necessarily good shape, okay? They're not necessarily in good shape. And how is that affecting everything that's going on? Well, it's the same kind of shape almost as Silicon Valley Bank, all right? Let's pay attention to what, you know, what the federal government did with Signature Bank, another crypto-friendly bank. And the signals that it sends, okay? We're just going to take over this bank because we don't have confidence in management. But the bank wasn't insolvent. The bank was not insolvent. They had mitigated everything and moved away from that problem. They still got taken over. Cool, all right. Then rumors got around that they, if you, whoever buys that bank or that bank's assets would have to divest crypto, right? And then that got around. And they said, no, 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 that's not what we said. That's not what we said. We never said that. Um, kind of looks like, smells like there are no guardrails. There's no clear regulation. You have companies making decisions based on years of zero regulation or regulation through enforcement, um, unnecessary lawsuits. That's, these are the decisions that companies are making. Right now, there's news out there, there's news floating around out there that Coinbase is going to build an offshore platform because of this problem. Let that wash over you for a minute. Rumors, this is hearsay, Coinbase could be looking to build an offshore, meaning outside of the United States, that's what, that's what offshore means, um, build a platform. Let that wash over you. 
And I would have to say that that would probably be a smart move. Why is that? It's a smart move because the United States is going out of its way to ruin crypto in this country. Now, I look at the banking system and I go, but you guys have regulated that, right? You guys have oversight over that, right? We're safe if we put our money in banks. Except there were a whole bunch of people that lost money or for a period of time didn't know if they were going to get their money. Oops. How's that play out in your head? <coughs> Excuse me. So when I look at this week going forward, this week going forward, I think we're going to see more banking problems. There are 180 something banks that are not in good shape. Internationally, you have Credit Suisse not in good shape, just received a $54 billion cash infusion, and UBS saying, eh, we'll be willing to buy Credit Suisse for $1 billion. You just got a $54 billion cash infusion, and this bank over here is willing to buy you for one. How's that work? Well, it works pretty easily, right? Because they're basically UBS is saying, we're willing to take on the debt, the assets, everything else, and we'll clean everything out and we'll make it work. That's what they say. But UBS isn't all that strong either. And then you have this parliament member. I'm looking at this at this article and the former Belgian finance minister and European parla parliament member is saying we should ban crypto given the banking crisis. Now, it sounds insane, but it actually makes sense, right? Because the banking industry is going through so many freaking problems, what do you want to do? You want to make sure that the banking industry can gain liquidity. Well, you're not going to gain liquidity if people keep taking their money out of the banking industry and putting it into crypto. Now, I don't think this guy has thought it through. And the reason why is because, well... When you look at it, that's the whole reason why Bitcoin was created, as well as follow on altcoins, because the banking industry and the governments control it all. And now you have something where the banking industry and the governments cannot control it, and they're having issues. That's where we are right now, folks. So for the next week, I'm expecting to see more fallout from the banking industry on an international level. On an international level. And I'm, I think we could see a pullback in crypto. It, I don't think it'll be big. And if we see more banks go down, I think you're going to see crypto go up. That's honestly what I think. So right now, Bitcoin is leading the way up in terms of the investments that I'm looking at, where I would put my money, I'm looking at Bitcoin. However, you know what I am, what I'm also looking at are all the altcoins that have not really experienced that much of an up. All right. And the reason why I say that is because if you look at things like Polygon and other coins, Bitcoin is up a lot. Bitcoin is up a lot. Year to date, Bitcoin is up 65%. In the past seven days, Bitcoin is up 33%, while Polygon is only up 10%. Do I expect Polygon to catch up? Yes. So that means I could buy Polygon right now, in the way I'm thinking, I could buy Polygon right now and still have a major chance to get back up to that buck 51, right? That buck 51, buck 52 that it was at just a few weeks ago and experience good growth. I can still buy Bitcoin and be perfectly safe. Hold that for a year, two years, three years, 50 years, don't care. And it'll go up. Peaks and valleys, but it'll peak and valley going up. That's what I'm thinking. Having event is next year, so I'm going to start loading up on Bitcoin. My Ethereum play is going to be most likely Polygon because it's cheaper. I can accumulate more. Because I honestly think that there's a 10x opportunity for Polygon. In my research, that's what I'm thinking, because it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to remain.
And I do think Polygon will wind up being in the top five coins. But I also like other coins. Shibarium was was launched in its test net. It messed up. Um, other coins have come out with some news. Shibarium messed up in that launch. But it's a test net. You're supposed to find shit. You're supposed to find that stuff. So Shibarium, okay, fine. I think I think Shib is going to eventually go up. All this yap yap about Doge, show me the use case, still waiting for it. I know it's popular overseas. Not popular, but I know it's got some use overseas. But I think Shib, I think Shib is gonna really take off. Out of the two, I'm I'm banking on Shib. Now XRP, yeah, I've got some XRP and I'm probably gonna buy more. Why? Because I'm really buying into the idea of win or lose. When the court case is over with the SEC, Ripple is going to take off. If it wins, obviously it's going to skyrocket. But once that certainty is met, the most that'll happen is it doesn't happen in the United States. But overseas, it's being used. So I'm paying attention to Ripple. I think it'll wind up taking off. So I'm not worried about that. But I advise people to take a look at what's going on now what's going on in the future and just take note and use your common sense there we've still had we still have fallout from the banking industry we still have regular regulators and departments like sec fdic occ that are still trying to figure it all out cftc they're all still trying to figure it out and not really doing that good of a job so right now, I'm not about the banking industry. I'm all about handling everything in crypto. I keep enough money in, in the bank to pay bills. And if I find one of my vendors has flipped the script and they're now going to accept crypto, what? That's less of a chunk that I'm going to have in a bank. Because I don't trust them. I don't trust banks. What kind of, you know account do I need to have with a bank to make sure that it's FDIC insured? I need, you need to ask the question. Going to have your little kid, got, just got a new job, and you know they need to open up a bank account, or you want to open up a truck, ask them what, what kind of accounts are covered by FDIC and what kind of accounts are not. Pay attention. I don't want to put my kids' money in banks. I want to put my kids' money in investments. Let their money work for them starting young. That's the whole point. I do these videos for them. I'm not giving financial advice. I'm trying to share the lessons that I learn. And there you have it. The next week, I think, is going to be wrought with banking news. Banking news. If, it's, if it goes horribly bad, I think banking news is going to drive any kind of bad news. And I think it's going to drive crypto up. As far as everything else, medium, medium news. Maybe we see a little pullback, eventually we'll go back up again. But these are the things that I'm considering right now. Don't forget. So we're over the 25, uh, 25 217 or something like that. Um, I can tell you what I was looking at. My next number up is 28,028. Remember that number, 28,028. That's the next number that we have to hit. Right, I told you before, if we hit that 25,000 and change number, and I'll bring up that, that number just so I can tell you exactly what it is. Just bear with me as the screen opens up. Do, 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 do. All righty. So it was 25,210. Then the number after that was 26,538. The number after that was 20, well, it's currently at 27,713. Again, my number is 2828. Now, mind you, we still have to maintain above 23,417. Okay? All, everything that's happened thus far has been only over the span of a few days. I'm talking, I need at least a week being above 23,417 before I'm going to buy into anything. Right. I like the ride up. That's great. That's awesome. I'm expecting a little bit of a pullback and then on more news coming this week. And mind you, one of the things that could happen this week is a former U.S. president that could be arraigned. 
let that wash over you. That's going to cause turmoil. And the more turmoil there is, the more I'm going to believe in crypto. Why? Because it's not controlled by anybody. I can put my hands on it whenever, wherever I want. That's what I'm paying attention to. So the next number that we have is 2828. The number that we have surpassed thus far is 26,538. So we went from 23,417 to 25,210 to 26,538. And the next number is 2828. Then the next number after that is 31,5. All right. These are the numbers that I'm paying attention to. But again, I need to see us sustain above the measly 23,417 for greater than a week. These are parabolic shifts. These are huge shifts. Woo -woo. So I don't know if we're going to stay there. But this is what I'm expecting this week. All right. Anyway, this is Eddie J on crypto. If you have any questions, want me to research something, you want to teach me something, drop a note and I'll definitely look into it. All right. Have a good one. Bye bye.